We've journeyed across the lands of the greater American landscape to the cold winters of Russia to the reaches of space and beyond, exploring opportunities in fiction and lore describing how ultimately screwed humanity would be in an overwhelming amount of video games. But there is one part of our big blue ball we haven't descended into quite yet in terms of survival analysis. And no, we aren't going to be covering whatever creepy, mysterious, and gigantic creatures that rest in the almost infinite void of the ocean deep endless darkness not knowing what's near you and what's approaching does anyone else have an irrational fear that any moment they'll be teleported to the furthest leagues of the sea like i know the sheer pressure would flatten me like a pancake in a second but still anyways no we won't be covering why you wouldn't survive the deep sea or subnautica or sea of thieves no this time we take a look at a society gone wrong after attempting to create something new something utopian something under the sea under the sea this week, we cover the pinnacle PSA for Don't Do Drugs Kids, C Lab 2042, a rapture that sends people lower, not higher, living in a reverse aquarium. In a society riddled with drug addicts, the only way to persevere is by doing even more drugs than the entire population put together. A creepy army of girls that will trigger anyone with trypanophobia, that's a fear of needles. I'm not just your daddy, I'm your big daddy. Mental and genetic manipulation, a different take on stem cell research, and would you kindly game itself. This week, we are telling you why you wouldn't survive Bioshock's Rapture Civil War. <laughs> Sorry. Everything that follows all stemming from the mind of an ambitious gentleman called Andrew Ryan, or in his original native name, Andrei Ryanovsky. Raised within the Russian Empire under the autocratic rule of the Tsars up until the Russian Revolution of 1917 led to the transfer of leadership to the Bolsheviks. Lenin's guidance led to the extermination of any who opposed the party's communist regime, which promptly destroyed the Ryanovsky family business and the murders of his aunt and uncles. His father took Andrei and eventually fled to the United States. It was through experiencing the ideals of communism in such a drastic measure that shaped his idealisms. Those who made their own fortune and created an empire were the foundation and exemplars of society, and those who worked to daily ask for handouts were the parasites of society. Moving to America in 1919 with a more American-sounding name of Andrew Ryan, he quickly found success not only through luck but with keen intellect. Striking oil on their family property and quickly investing in the right companies, the family was soon to rise to fortune, even amidst the Great Depression. Even though the country was brought out of the Depression through a series of programs in the New Deal, Ryan's past trials and tribulation had taught him that all this government interference had been doing is supporting the parasites of society who did not want to work to rise from poverty. In his mind, the only thing people should own is what they have earned through work and determination, not through handouts. Ryan had bought a large land of forest area he labeled as his private gift. Away, but the general population demanded he give it all up as a public park because it only belonged to God. In a refute to the parasites demanding to take what was his, he burned the entirety of the forests so the parasites could not infect it. But it wasn't until he bared witness to the usage of the atomic bombs in Hiroshima that he realized that the mindset of those he opposed was way too destructive as they would go through any means to seize what was not rightfully theirs. Besides delving into his political and social beliefs, this is all leading up to what spurred Ryan to set out to sea in his ship the Olympian to the farthest reaches of the ocean depths to find a place on Earth where these so-called parasites could never reach. Using the entirety of his vast wealth, developing rapture so that all citizens within its walls would be free to live solely as they choose, without any intervention posed by God, government, or any organization. It was Ryan's purest idea of freedom, where even social programs that we have come to be accommodated with, like public health care and hospitals, police forces, and firefighters were all privatized and owned by companies with interests. Everything was at a cost. Food, sanitation, general security, and even the air they breathe. Businesses were free to compete with each other without government interference allowing for any practices to go without fear of repercussions, leading to some people being increasingly successful while a percentage of citizens were becoming more and more poverty-stricken. Would you kindly see a divide in wealth classes arise? Even though Andrew Ryan invited what he deemed to be the world's brightest, there still came people who fell on hard times, even those who worked in 
this company of Ryan Industries, and these people had nothing to rely on, leading to them begging in the streets. The parasites Ryan feared had grown in his underwater test tube. The outer world had no knowledge of Rapture's existence, and Ryan enacted a decree that no one was allowed to leave or even make contact with the world outside of Rapture, no matter how dire a poor individual became. Tempers were rising, and no solution was coming to surface until a dock worker had been bitten by a local sea slug. No, he didn't miraculously become sea slug man, but when inspected by geneticist Bridget Tannenbaum, it was discovered that the bite had actually completely healed the already crippled hand. She discovered that these sea slugs had a miraculous cellular property that would be referred to as Adam. Originating from an oceanic trench somewhat near the site of Rapture, a bright, almost underwater aurora borealis called the luminescent biomass is what mutated these slugs to produce Adam. Adam is a green liquid originating from these slugs that produces powerful stem cells within a host. But before a cell is designated as a toenail cell or a pancreas cell, it's what we call a stem cell, sort of like a blank cell, do you understand? Stem cells basically being blank cells that will copy and adhere to any cells it is placed in contact with, allowing the expedited process of either healing, replacing damaged cells, or even filling the gaps left open by disease or horrible injury. While stem cells in our world controversially derive by being extracted from aborted fetuses, it's way more controversial within the context of Bioshock. Adam mimics these characteristics by also giving abilities and functionality to a human body never thought to be possible something out of comic books. Atom, in its raw form, can be genetically manipulated to refine it into a usable product known as plasmid, which can be easily administered and used by the general public. However, harvesting sea slugs would actually show very little yield in production. These slugs were not pumping out nearly enough, so certain experimentations were made. Sea slugs were implanted into the stomachs of humans, but in most cases, they would die out. The only successful outcomes came with at adolescent females below the age of 12, where the sea slug turned these girls into symbiotic hosts known as little sisters. Darkening the skin, brightening their eyes to a soulless yellow, these girls would regurgitate Adam directly. They were throwing this stuff up, functioning as a plentiful source for future plasmid production. Side note, the slug could be removed and harvested for a pure and plentiful form of the Adam, but at the cost of the little sister's life. Would you kindly see an ethical dilemma behind subjecting young girls to this, as well as finding enough girls to make this production work? Frank Fontaine, a notable swindler, criminal opportunist, and a man of a thousand faces, created the Little Sisters Orphanage. Upon vase value, it was Fontaine's safe haven for girls who were either lost or abandoned by their families, or worse enough, for families that were destitute and couldn't afford having a child while they were living on the streets, Fontaine offered supposed shelter, education, and food for their little girls. However, girls who lived there were living in awful conditions, and many were sent to a secretive facility where the sea slug implementations would occur. For a time, plasmids became a scientific wonder and even commercial success, even for how many girls were going missing. Shortly after, any and every one of Rapture's residents were using plasmids continuously thanks to the newly initiated company of Fontaine's Futuristics, people attained powers that allowed them to produce fire and electricity from their very fingertips, use telekinesis to move objects with their mind, miniature cyclones and burst of powerful air to possibly power turbines, and instantly spawn a swarm of bees to, I, I, I don't know, I guess create honey? It's hard to say how many of the plasmids used in Bioshock 1 were for commercial and practical use, and those that were manufactured for the Civil War. It's hard to see what was practical and what was used as a defense. Regardless, a new rapture of plasmid users led to a stronger and dutiful society that balanced relations for a while. Would you kindly believe it did not last long? Besides the gene editing and positive mutating capabilities that Adam and plasmids had to offer, there were extremely detrimental effects they caused as well. Adam will have serious side effects. No matter how large the dosage or frequency of usage, people will begin to change physically and their minds will start to deteriorate and degradation to people, mostly to habitual users. Adam also forces the body into a chemical dependency since these newly inserted stem cells will destabilize if not given more Adam over and over and over. But in the process of these stem cells using the Adam, the newly injected Adam 
bottom will create even more stem cells, widening the need for more and more. And with the powers used also comes a cost of personal energy. Eve is another refinement of Adam that is solely used to refuel the use of certain plasmids, but still forcing that dependency, basically creating a society of Adam junkies and abusers soon called the Splicers. If Rapture had ethical and health standards like most societies, we would probably see those obnoxious drug commercials with happy people doing normal activities, explaining the positive effects of the substance, and then nearly a minute of a voice sped up explaining the negative side effects. Now would you kindly care for a word from our sponsors? Sometimes, the day-to-day -day life in Rapture can be so dull and my normal human body just can't handle the upkeep of working to create the successful me I know I can be. But thanks to plasmids, I can now be the superhero part of myself I never knew existed! Whether it's lighting a smoke for my lover, restarting the electrical grid to my sector, or making bees to start my colony, I can finally be a powerful, productive member of society! Symptoms include bleeding from the eyes, nose, and mouth, blindness, crystal formations on skins, cutis laxa, death, hair loss, hair patches, hallucinations, heterochromia, iridium, hormone imbalance, insanity, insomnia, jaundice, lesions, memory loss, paranoia, rashes, shingles, spider veins, swollen gums, dactyl, tooth loss, tumors, vicarious veins, viltigo, and heavy withdrawal symptoms. Plasmids! It brings the Adam and Eve out in all of us. With the addiction rate escalating, causing a need for more Adam, Fontaine's business skyrocketed, rivaling Ryan Industries. Fontaine also engaged in criminal activities that involved people actually interacting with surface dwellers and culling the masses of poor and downtrodden who resented Ryan so that Fontaine could assume control of Rapture eventually, which worried its creator, Andrew Ryan. Ryan financed a severe investigation to have Fontaine brought to justice for breaking the most serious of his creeds. Before Fontaine faked his death in a shootout, Mr. Fontaine had somehow managed to kidnap the unborn son of Ryan, sending him to the surface world, brainwashing him, forcing him to age hastily with genetic modifications, and training him in combat to someday return as an obedient slave, who, spoilers, is you, the main protagonist of Jack in the story of Bioshock 1. Not actually you, you're definitely not going to be a Jack. The death of Fontaine gave a false sense of hope for Ryan, while Fontaine Fontaine received cosmetic surgery and vocal changes to become the new Irish-sounding fisherman named Atlas. During this time, Fontaine's Futuristics was struggling to have their little sisters keep up with the exponentially growing demand for Adam. People were literally becoming insane due to withdrawal symptoms and the furthering psychological strain on every person being confined and isolated to Andrew Ryan's safety bubble led to people dealing with confined environment psychosis, or for simpler people like me, basically just a wide-scale version of cabin fever. Stack that on top of the competitive capitalistic stress and increase in violence, it was needless to say people were unhappy, and Adam was the only fix to people's problems. Money wasn't even cutting in at this point. Atlas, or rather Fontaine, picked up where he left off, and culled together the masses and staged a revolt against Ryan, who had nationalized Fontaine Futuristics, ultimately betraying the anti-government mindset Ryan Ryan himself tried so long to abstain from. After imprisonments and further calling, eventually led to the Kashmir restaurant terrorist attack, which during a New Year's televised message by Ryan, supporters of the newly named Atlas instead of Fontaine, bombed and attacked a meeting of cultural elites, resulting in dozens dead and injured. This was the beginning of civil war and the genetic arms race. Plasmids were now not just a tool for everyday living and convenience, but now a heavily selling weapon for self-defense and warfare. Their sales and production were exploding Loading, But the increase in demand demanded an increase in supply. People were either dying from civil conflicts or overdosing, their bodies still ripe with leftover Adam. Fontaine Futuristics soon instructed and indoctrinated their harbored little sisters with propagandic film and drugs to get them to wield what is basically a giant syringe and search out any of the dead splicers in society and extract any remaining Adam within their bodies to meet demands further. Due to the indoctrination, the little 
little sisters saw everything as a paradise, and what they were doing to these dead bodies was fun and enjoyable. However, with what was about to happen, people wouldn't be bearing any mind to how horrific these girls turned out to be. In fact, they knew that these girls held Adam in their tools and body, and would actively hunt them down to subside their cravings. Would you kindly believe that you yourself wouldn't fall victim to this powerful addiction that causes you to kill little girls? Leading to the big daddies, who were humans with their flesh grafted to powerful deep sea diving equipment, were repurposed to respond to the little sister's pheromones and be overly protective of them while they harvested Adam. If separated from their sisters too long due to parental bonding experimentation, they will either go into an insane rage or fall and slip into a deep coma, only to be awakened by Dr. Tannenbaum. The weapons they wield and sheer amount of armor meant even people wielding powerful plasmids would be no match for a freaking drill to the chest and or rivet gun harpoon through the skull. However, it has been noted that splicers have had the capability to take down one big daddy if they coordinate an attack, although casualties are bound to occur. With a civil war on the breach, there had to be more to fight with beyond plasmids as to not exhaust the body's internal supply of Eve. So many firearms and weapons also had to be found and made. Regular, well-crafted guns could only be found at firing ranges and with security companies. So for the less economically fortunate, crafting rudimentary weapons like grenade launchers would get the job done. Ryan installed turrets and security bots all over Rapture, as well as imposing drastic government curfews and laws in order to attempt to stop the Atlas supporter uprisings. This all did little to simmer down rioting and civil unrest, but the utopian society he once dramatized had gone from its people working for success to fighting for survival. People fearing the worst withdrew all their money from the central banking, tanking the economy, bankrupting many businesses where maintenance fell below standards, their protective glassing breaking and flooding, killing people that were living in these foreclosed businesses. Supporters of Ryan and supporters of Atlas waged war for what seemed like ages, until Yi Su Chong implemented mind-controlling pheromones that disintegrated the free will of any of the splicers abusing Adam and made them slaves to Ryan. Would you kindly believe I had to explain all of this in order for you to get the gist of what's going on? Now this is the point where Bioshock 1 starts off, but we will now place ourselves in the midst of this revered utopia. Instead of the protagonist Jack arriving in Rapture, let's say we did instead. The dire situation of the underwater city would endanger you the moment you set foot within its chambers. Splicers would be quick to attack you on sight either due to mind control onset by Ryan or due to the fact that they have become so insane from withdrawal symptoms. Due to the severe amount of plasmids and Adam ravaging their body, their minds may be mush, but their bodies have become strengthened to allow for a more feral barrage of attacks. They still are able to communicate and congregate and are often found together in groups, most likely due to a pack mentality and knowledge that most threats in Rapture require numbers. Splicers can come at you in a variety of waves, but if they are devoid of Eve or haven't mutated enough, they resort to average forms of assault. Thuggish splicers are the most common type, not wielding any plasmid powers, relying on running at people with melee weapons to bash their fucking heads in. Leadhead slicers retain the knowledge to attack with guns and ammunition and aren't much different from the thuggish types, and the two aren't really much of a threat, which they can be taken out with a fair amount of heavy strikes or few bullets, unless encountered in the aforementioned numbers, comparative to the rest of Rapture's denizens. Spider slicers have the ability to quickly jump and attach to walls and ceilings in order to strike victims and fall away from retaliation, confusing and disorienting the opponent while it bounces around like a madman, hacking away at you while you try to pinpoint their location in a three-dimensional space. I really hope you have good aim. Speaking of hard to track down, the Houdini splicer will be teleporting left and right, avoiding any attacks they encounter upon first strike. They can attack with a variety of plasmids as they seem to have a large massive eve reserved to attack. Their teleporting is only given away by clouds they leave behind, but by the time your slow ass has realized where they are, they're gonna be saying, 
NANI? The general public of splicers will always have the unknown capability of wielding any number of produced plasmids, so you stand the chance of being burned alive, having your heart stopped by high voltage electrocution, being frozen stiff and then smashed to pieces, swarmed by murderous bees and dying to their hoarded poison, being flung at high speeds to many cyclones, being telekinetically flung across the room and having your neck broken, or just a litany of other supernatural ways. Of dying. Your best chance of being able to fight power to power with these devilish freaks and brutish aquatic behemoths, you would have to resort to using the very plasmids that devolved and evolved these splicers. If you can handle the fact that your flesh will look like it's boiling over, an ice cube, or the fact that bees will be swarming from your innards, you for a time will be one powerful bastard. But for a lot of people out there, you may discover that you have an addictive personality. And the pure fact that plasmids and Adam innately force the user to go into withdrawals without more and more and more and more Adam being pumped into their body, you will be seeing a lot of backlash from those superpowers you think are so cool. Your mind slowly denigrating as you lose who you are as a person, looking for your next fix just to stay balanced, doing whatever you can to find more, attacking others and killing them. Maybe people you know and love? And you may be attacking people that are more properly armed, so you may off yourself just trying to attack somebody while trying to get your fix. You may say that Bioshock's protagonist Jack didn't transform into a splicer, so that must mean that you are also in the clear from becoming an insane junkie. I gotta say, stop thinking you're the actual protagonist in these games. We are all screwed. That's the point of this series. Would you kindly remember that Jack was sent away to be genetically modified to possibly be resistant to the negative effects of plasmids by Fontaine, considering how he plowed through a majority of Rapture population to end Ryan's reign. Not only that, but we didn't get to see the full effects of Adam withdrawal, that on top of how short the time frame was for the story of Bioshock 1. Now you may think attacking a big daddy is a bad idea now, but once you're knee deep in stem cell shit, you will probably think your remaining Eve and plasmids can take it out, only to look like BP oil drilled you open. Which leads me to the other point. Big daddies will be lumbering about escorting the little sisters as they pick up the scraps of any splicers you manage to kill. You may not know the little sister is evil while going around a corner and accidentally shoot at or around her. Well, let's just say that's the last mistake you will ever be making. Basically, anything you can do to it will be shrugged off in its enraged state. You can attempt to throw fireballs, shoot high power ammunition at it, but most, if not anything, will be useless. Jack was able to take numerous daddies down due to his genetic superiority. You can use the hypnotized big daddy plasmid that came light into the civil Civil Wars production cycle from Fontaine Futuristics, but that's if you find it in time, allowing you to be temporarily be protected by the Big Daddy. But once that veil wears off and he doesn't see his little sister around, you're gonna be right back where you started. Arriving at the point of the Civil Wars climax would most certainly mean death for you, as a normal human being could be killed by splicers of any type, Big Daddies, and hell, probably a little sister stabbing you with that big ass needle, the turrets shredding your body, and maybe even drowning to a glass room flooding in. Now let's say you were one of the bright minds brought into Rapture at the very beginning of Andrew Ryan's plan. Well, you're probably gonna end up a druggie, dying to overdose, dying in a futile civil war, being eviscerated by a big daddy trying to get your fix, or just dying out over time as time takes its toll on your body. If you're a one to say no to drugs and genetic modification, who, which let's face it, if you were seeing that people had superpowers, you're probably gonna take Adam, and somehow avoid the the scatterbrained eyes of the splicers and bump into big daddies, well, survival is still going to be just a bit tough, considering any escape boats are going to be scarce, food production and fresh water supplies would be stretched thin, would be stretched thin, and for the people who think drinking seawater is a good idea, please don't drink seawater. I mean, you could go through out of business stores searching for any supplies and parts to heal yourself, slap together crude weapons, and just basically survive. You are trapped beneath the sea, struggling to get by, with no one knowing where you are, no hope for rescue, where everyone is out to kill you for a fix, the leaders are tucked away in the shadows, trying to control the city that once held so much 
promise. Now I won't be covering enemy types including the Big Sister or Brute Splicer as they only started cropping up 8 to 10 years after the Civil War had concluded, leaving behind a barren ghost town for these creatures to die off, change, or develop. So if you think you can weather a storm of people burning you alive and all sorts of death and destruction, well, no, you're not. It's not going to happen. That about covers Rapture's Civil War and what would happen if you either were a part of the initial populace that started life in this bubble under the sea or voyaged here during that climactic battle between political differences juiced up by super drugs. Did I miss anything? Disappointed that Bioshock's 2 lore wasn't included? Don't like my voice or how long these videos are? Complain to me or be that cool guy or gal and add to the conversation in the comments below. If you want to see more, make sure to check out my community tab where I hold votes for which will be next in the Why You Wouldn't Survive series. I'll be taking a break next week to see family, so stay tuned and vote and remember to like and subscribe and please ring that notification bell to keep these videos coming in the future. Donate to my Patreon to motivate Zackass to keep moving on, which these lovely people on the left side of your screen are who have kept me going over these last two years. Donate during my weekend streams where I attempt to speedrun Left 4 Dead campaigns and utterly hate myself in the process. And last, I do have a Teespring with some merch if you want to support while also looking like a one-man cheeseburger apocalypse. Until next time, I'm Zach S. Would you kindly join me next time? I'm Zach S, aka Wow Such Gaming. Stay well.